We love getting your questions, so we want you to keep them coming via Facebook, Twitter, and on our webpage. Who knows, we might just answer your question here in the studio audience next. Today on an all new Daily Helpline. And here with us today is Sean McMillan. Here's my thing. I think children should have the right to feel like they're important. But you gotta step up here, Mom. But I think there's a fear of intimacy with you. That's why relationships are a lot like medicine. You, they should be used only as directed mm -hmm. and kept out of the reach of children. Come on. And I'm Spirit, and here with us today is Sean McMillan. Everybody give it up for Sean. Sean, it is so awesome to have you here. Yeah. Okay. Sean, for those of you who don't know Sean, Sean is a pastor. He is a friend of this show. You have done so many amazing things. And I mean, I, I just want the audience to be familiar with your greatness, which they will in a few minutes. You're just a great connector. Yeah. I mean, all the way top to bottom, authentic. You always just show up. But how do you how do you balance being, well, first of all, you're a visiting professor at UCLA, yes. mm -hmm. author, pastor, and dad. Yeah. And dad. How do you, Single dad. How do you balance I mean, all that? Grown men. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a dance. Mm -hmm. And I do it by remembering that I'm grateful to be entrusted by the universe or God or spirit to have those responsibilities. It, it would be one thing to be sitting in a corner in the dark and wishing that I could be something, yeah. but to have been selected by whatever, to, to have a chance yeah. to make a contribution, it, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. It, even, when, even when it gets hard, it's still good, yeah. and I look forward to it. So I'm, I'm honored to do that dance, and it's the great work of my life. Mm. Oh, you're so amazing. We're really glad to have you here today. I think you're going to help us help a lot of people. I hope so. Yeah, so you ready to do this? Let's do it. Okay, you ready to do this? I'm ready. Are you guys ready? It, right, let's do it. Let's do it, okay? So let's meet our first guest. Now, like many mothers, Alicia is at odds with her teenage daughter, Caitlin, and she doesn't know what to do about it. Let's welcome Alicia and Caitlin to the show. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Have a seat for us. Good morning. Good morning. Hey there. Have a seat for us, guys. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. So, teenage daughter, mom, not sure what to do and at odds. Tell us a little bit more about this. Well, Caitlin and I haven't always had the best relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I divorced her father in um, 2006, okay. and I moved on to another relationship. And since I've been in that relationship, me and her just feud constantly. She can't stand him, he can't stand her. Mm. And so I'm kind of at my wit's end right now. I don't know what to do to try to mend our relationship. Mm -hmm. um, whether that means I don't be with this man, that's perfectly fine with me, except for I have Is it? two little children with him. Wait, 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 we gotta slow down. You said <laughs> it, it, if I'm with him or if I'm not, that's perfectly fine with me. Yes, I do love this man, but I love my children more and he refuses to accept him and my 11-year-old daughter. And if you can't accept them into my family, that is part of me. And so it kind of makes me feel like maybe I shouldn't be with him, but then I'm jeopardizing the two little children who that's their father. Now let me ask you, has it always been this way, this dynamic since he came into the house? Yes. From the very beginning? From the very beginning, however, it has gotten progressively worse mm -hmm. to the point where now they don't even speak. So what do the two of you want for your relationship? You know, I mean, she's my daughter. She's my blood. I, I want to get along with her, and I know it's hard to get along with a 16-year-old daughter. I, this is my first 16-year-old daughter. I have mm -hmm. children that are smaller than her, so I'm trying to figure it out and catch it now and try to, like, set an example of what a 16-year-old is supposed to look like. One of the things that interests me about this is that people say hurtful things when they're being hurt. Mm -hmm. And what I'm interested in knowing from you is, what hurts you about living in that house? How does it feel to be there every day and to live under this situation? Um, well, <clears throat> sometimes I feel like she likes him more or she'll like talk about him more in like a positive way. You know Give me I mean? a like, feeling. How does it okay. feel? Um, well, sometimes I feel like she loves him more or she treats him 
with more respect or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Say more. I mean, turn okay. turn to your mom and, and okay. tell her how you feel because this, this, this is your chance to be heard. Mm -hmm. This is your chance where she has to listen to everything you have to say and you have the mic and you get to say what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um... <laughs> Sometimes I guess I feel like you... Like, um, you tell me that if it came down to it, you would choose me over him. But sometimes I feel like that's not necessarily true because the way you talk, not necessarily to me, but just ge in general. Or um, just the way you say things or the way you do things. Let me jump in here. And, and let me tell you, from one parent to another, I can totally relate to where you are because my family is a blended family. I have a 17-year-old on the high end and I have a 3-year-old on the low end. And so I get what it's like. I get what it's like to have the conflict between the teenager and the new partner. I get what it's like to have the child who wants to still see their parents together. But you got to step up here, mom. You got to step up. And the reason for that is because unfortunately, you are the person who has decided to join this family together. And so you feel like you're caught in the middle because you are. But I don't want you to see it as being caught in the middle. You are the nucleus. You are the center of this thing. And so when I hear you saying, oh, well, I, you know, I can choose him, he can stay or he can go, it sounds like you have your own relationship issues with this man. And that's one thing that should be totally outside of the purview of your children, but it's not. And then it sounds like she's becoming responsible when you check out, and that's not okay, because now she's becoming the parent. And you're saying, you know what, I can't deal with this relationship that I've created. Well, no wonder that the kids feel like they're caught up in chaos, because they are because you're chaotic on the inside. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get you taken care of. No, that totally makes sense. And, and I, I don't want her to feel like I just leave her with them because nine times out of 10, that's not the case. But to be completely honest with you, it happens. And, and I don't like to run away. Like I'm not that type of person. Of course, I want to stay with my kids and I want to be with them and I want to let them know everything's okay. But when I'm crying and it's an emotional wreck and he's calling me names and I'm just like, I, I can't take it. There has been a time in the past where it was violent and I can't, I can't have them see that. And so yes, I have a lot of issues that I need to work with with, with this relationship and um, I don't think it's worth it. Okay, all yeah. these things that you don't want for your relationship, but let me ask you, what do you want your house to look like right now? I really just want my kids to be happy. And, and I know this is really bad to say, but I don't care if I'm happy. I want them to be happy because they are my world and I would do anything in the world for them. I just don't know what to do to mend what's already damaged between me and her before it starts damaging the rest of the children. Do you think your happiness is tied to their happiness at all? When they're happy, I'm happy. I do believe that. No, 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 that's not what I mean. Do you think that your daughter's happiness is tied to your happiness at all? If you're happy, I'm happy is what she's saying. Like, if you're not happy, then that means I'm not happy. Sometimes, but I don't want to say that all the time because she is 16 and she's going through her own battles, and so, yeah. But, but you're here today because nobody's happy. Exactly. Nobody's happy. Yeah. Well, and maybe the two little ones that don't know anything, but yeah. Well, you know, the reality is this. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of pain in this family, a lot of pain in this situation. And what, what I'm not hearing is your ability to talk to each other and to be really honest about how yeah. you feel. You're, you're almost protecting each other from really communicating what's going on at the gut level. And that's not gonna help the situation until you can put all the walls down and, and understand that being honest with someone hmm. is not going to destroy them but it's gonna make the relationship better, this will never be any better. So you really gotta overcome overthinking this and say to your mom and say to your daughter, this is how I feel about what's going on. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, what I haven't heard you say is how you feel about each other. All the conversation has been about this relationship and how it has affected your relationship. Mm -hmm. But as, as far as I can tell, you were here first. And so, how do you feel about each other? How do you feel about your daughter? Here's my thing. I think children should have the right to feel like they're important. They should not have to compete with anybody for their parent. And a child wants to know 
when their mother and father walks in the room that I I'm wanted, I'm valued, I'm special, and your daughter doesn't feel that way. Right. How does that make you feel that your daughter doesn't feel that way? That's really bad. That's really bad that she feels that way because I felt that way when I was little. How does it make so you feel? I, I know, I, I want, I, I feel like there's, there's, that's why we're here. I have to be able to fix it. I have to be able to correct it. I have to be able to find out what I need to do to, to amend it because... Well, I think we need to do just that. I, I think you've showed us a good picture of what's going on and we need to give you some solutions so that you can walk out of here and try a different way. So when we come back, we're going we're gonna to look at that a little further. So we'll be right back and to continue our conversation with Alicia and Caitlin. Coming up. And I'm just wondering what it would be like if you had, if you had an opportunity to set the gloves down. I just really need help because I'm hurting. We love getting your questions, so we want you to keep them coming via Facebook, Twitter, and on our webpage. Who knows, we might just answer your question here in the studio audience next.